And uh, I'm going to read here from uh, Psalm chapter 100 and verse 4. And just taking a, I'm taking a slight detour. We were preaching and teaching from Sermon on the Mount, talking about the life of a patriot. And on Sunday, we looked at Matthew chapter 6, verses uh, 1 through 4. And we talked about our righteousness. And uh, just really want to encourage you to continue thinking about your secret righteousness. Absolutely, people need to see our righteousness. But it needs to be more of an overflow of who we are secretly as followers of Jesus, as patriots of his kingdom. But as we look forward to next Thursday and uh, we start thinking about Thanksgiving, I want to read here from Psalm chapter 100 and verse 4. And the psalmist says, enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. You know, as we approach next Thursday, during this year of 2020, such a challenging year on so many levels. Of course, the coronavirus is the big one. Uh, we've had a lot of uh, ugliness uh, from our country uh, bubble to the top. We've uncovered some things that we've known about for a while that we need to think about more deeply in terms of race in America. All of those things may be a challenge. And maybe you've had other challenges. We know we've had sisters who have had surgery. Uh, Kelly had cancer. Praise God, she's finished with therapy and uh, and in remission now. Um, I lost my father in in August. Lots of things have gone on this year. Besides what's going on at a, at a larger scale, at the, at the at the national level. As we approach Thanksgiving, maybe you're finding this thought of Thanksgiving, of praise, of gratitude, a little bit difficult. Now, as as Christians, as people who read our Bible, as people who believe in God, intellectually, I think we can all still say that God is good. But emotionally, can you see how many of these words for thank you that you can pronounce in different languages? This is gratitude, is thankfulness, just bubbling over out of your heart. Quarantine fatigue is a thing. Fatigue is a thing. More people, I believe, are tired of 2020 than they have found reasons to be thankful for 2020. Mm -hmm. Tonight, I want to take a little time to, to help our hearts to get around to a place where next Thursday is not going to be, oh no, this is all Thanksgiving is. I, I want to prime our hearts for a thankful Thanksgiving. I want to remind us of many, many reasons to be thankful that the Bible tells us about. I want to encourage us to let the Spirit really speak to your heart as you listen to these verses. And I want to ask that at the end, whoever is willing would share what they're thankful for this year. This is the, the most important year ever to have a grateful devotional, a thanksgiving devotional, yeah. to have gratitude because it's been globally a very difficult year. And so at the end, I just want to invite you as I'm reading these scriptures and if you have a reason that you're grateful, don't, don't hold back. Don't be shy. I would just ask that you turn on your screen so we can, so we can see you, so we can enjoy uh, that time together. So if you need to get a, a, a baseball cap and put that on because you didn't comb your hair tonight, you can do that. You can go grab the baseball cap and then you can come on the screen later. The only thing I would ask is that we don't share anything about politics. <laughs> so, so I don't know who you voted for and how you think that's going to turn out or who you didn't vote for and why you're grateful for that. Let's not get that involved in what we're going to be talking about tonight. No, no politics. This is how God has impacted us personally. Not at a national level, but, but our lives, what we're grateful for. There's a, a guy named Frederick Van Omberg, and he actually uh, published a magazine called The Silent Partner down in Binghamton that was pretty well known uh, during the late 1800s, mid to late 1800s. And he said this, gratitude 
is a currency that we can mint for ourselves and spend without fear of bankruptcy. There is no person in your life that can give you gratitude. You have to choose it. It is a currency that you mint for yourself. You've got to look for it. There's some gratitude under the cushions somewhere in the couch tonight. Mm -hmm. And I hope these scriptures help us to mint a boatload of it even tonight. What can we be thankful for that the Bible tells us about? Well, you probably have some things already in your mind, but but I'm going to mention 17 things to be thankful for. And wow. they're fairly brief. I've got some scriptures. My wife said, wow, she doesn't know how we're going to do that and then have sharing, but we can. Number one. <laughs> We can because I said we can. That's why, honey. Number one, be thankful for every good thing in your life. This is what the Bible tells us. James 1, 17. Whatever is good and perfect comes down to us from God our Father, who created all the lights in the heavens. He never changes or casts a shifting shadow. The Bible tells us to be thankful for every good thing because God has given it to us. Be thankful that God woke you up this morning. Psalm chapter 3 and verse 5 says, I lie down and sleep. I wake again because the Lord sustains me. We woke up because the Lord sustains us. Wake up and be grateful that you woke up. You were sustained. Number three, be thankful for all the ways God meets your needs. Not your wants, but your needs. Psalm 23.1 says, the Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing. Philippians 4.19, and my God will meet all your needs according to the riches of his glory in Christ Jesus. Yeah. Matthew chapter 6, verses 31 through 34, do not worry, saying, what shall we eat or what shall we drink or what shall we wear? For the pagans run after all these things. And your heavenly father knows that you need them. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all of these things yeah. will be given to you as well. Yeah. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. Be thankful for family. I know it's hard sometimes. This year, especially be thankful for family. First John chapter 4, verse 19 says, We love. Because he first loved us. Any love you have in family comes from God. Yeah. Proverbs 31, 28. Think about, think about the moms in your life. If it's not your mom, maybe it's your kid's mom. <laughs> maybe it's your wife. It says, her children arise and call her blessed. Her husband also. And he, he praises her. Be thankful. 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse 4 talks about widows. It says, but if she has children or grandchildren... Their first responsibility is to show godliness at home and repay their parents by taking care of them. This is something that pleases God when we're thankful, when we're grateful for family. Be thankful that God's love endures forever. Psalm chapter 106 verses 1 and 2 says, Praise the Lord. Give thanks to the Lord for he is good. His love endures forever. Who can proclaim the mighty acts of the Lord or, fu or fully declare his praise? Mm -hmm. Later on, Psalm 136, chapter, uh, chapter 136, verses 6 through 10 says, Give thanks to him who placed the earth among the waters. His faithful love endures forever. Give thanks to him who made the heavenly lights. His faithful love endures forever. The sun to rule the day. His faithful love endures forever. And the moon and stars to rule the night. His faithful love endures forever. Give thanks to him who killed the firstborn of Egypt. His faithful love endures forever. Be thankful that Jesus died for your sins. We can give Jesus nothing he needs, but he gave his life for ours. Romans chapter 5, verses 6 to 11 says, You see, at just the right time, when we were still powerless, Christ died for the ungodly. Very rarely will anyone die for a righteous person, though 
for a good person, someone might possibly dare to die. But God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Right. Since we've now been justified by his, by his blood, how much more shall we be saved from God's wrath through him? For if while we were God's enemies, we were reconciled to him through the death of his son, how much more, having been reconciled, shall we be saved through his life? Not only is this so, but we also boast in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received reconciliation. Romans 5.15 goes on to say, But the gift is not like the trespass, for if the many die by the trespass of the one man, how much more did God's grace and the gift that came by the grace of the one man, Jesus Christ, overflow to the many? Be thankful that God convicts you of sin. John chapter 16 and verse 8 says, And he, when he comes, talking about the Comforter, the Holy Spirit, he will convict the world concerning sin and righteousness and judgment. Why should we be thankful of that? Well, because if you're a Christian, you need to be thankful that your sins are forgiven. Yeah. If you didn't know you had sin, you wouldn't have any reason to be forgiven. Romans 8, 1 says, therefore, there is now no condemnation Amen. for those who are in Christ Jesus. Hey, maybe you haven't confessed that thing you should confess. Confess it. But even if you haven't, there's no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. 1 John chapter 1, verse 7, if we're living in the light as God is in the light, then we have fellowship with each other. And the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin. Confess it. Get in the light. Not only will you be clean, but you'll feel clean. Colossians 1, 20 through 23. Jesus' death and resurrection is our good news. Through him, God reconciled everything to himself. He made peace with everything in heaven and on earth by means of Christ's blood on the cross. This includes you who are once far away from God. You were his enemies, separated from him by your evil thoughts and actions. Yet now, He's reconciled you to himself through the death of Christ in his physical body. As a result, he's brought you into his own presence and you're holy and blameless as you stand before him without a single fall. But you must continue to believe this truth and stand firmly in it. Don't drift away from the assurance you received when you heard the good news. The good news has been preached all over the world. And I, Paul, have been appointed as God's servant to proclaim it. Be thankful for the Bible. Without the Bible, we wouldn't know the good news. Right. We wouldn't know what sin is and what sin isn't. Psalm 119, verses 97 through 98 says, Oh, how I love your law. I meditate on it all day long. Your commands are always with me and make me wiser than my enemies. Psalm 111, verse 10. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. All who follow his precepts have good understanding. To him belongs eternal praise. Where do we learn his precepts? In his word. First Peter chapter 1 and verse 23. For you have been born again, not of perishable seed, but of imperishable through the living and enduring word of God. Be thankful for God's word. Be thankful for the fellowship of believers, for the church. Colossians 3.16 says, let the message of Christ dwell among you richly as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom through psalms, hymns, and songs from the Spirit. Sing to God with gratitude in your hearts. Man, he's given us each other so that we can not just be encouraged, but so that we can learn, so that we can have wisdom, so that we can be taught by one another. Hebrews 10, 24 and 25, let us consider how we may spur one another on toward love and good deeds, not giving up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing. What a bad habit. But encouraging one another and all the more as you see the day approaching. Hey, if you felt like, man, 2020 is the end of the world, the place you should want to be is with brothers and sisters on Zoom, on, on the phone, on FaceTime. We need each other. And especially as we see the day approaching. Galatians 6.2, help carry one another's burdens 
And then in this way, you'll obey the law of Christ. Hey, brothers and sisters, be thankful for the church. Hey, the only reason you wouldn't be thankful for the church is, is you're not getting as much out of it as you need. Yeah. No one can, it's like the old saying, uh, you can be brought to the well, but you can't be made to drink. If you're, if you're going through a hard time, if you're suffering, if you need help, but you don't talk to anybody about it, you definitely won't get help. Be thankful for the church. It's there for you. And you're there for us. Be thankful that your true home is waiting for you. Revelations, Revelation 21, 4 says, But we are citizens of heaven, where the Lord Jesus Christ lives. Amen. And we are eagerly waiting for him to return as our savior yep. wherever you're sitting right now look around you at those walls that's not your true home mm -hmm. i don't know what your zip code is wherever you live on this earth is not your true home mm -hmm. if you are a disciple of jesus if you've been reconciled to god through his blood your true home is in heaven no matter what happens here, we don't fear it as everyone else does. Instead, we look forward to our home in heaven. First Corinthians chapter two and verse nine. However, as it is written, what no eye has seen, what no ear has heard, and what no human mind has conceived, the things God has prepared for those who love him. It's gonna be beyond anything you've heard of or you can possibly imagine. They talk about streets of gold and pearly gates, because that sounds as opulent as we can make it, but it's nowhere close. That's your true home. That's your true home. Again, in Revelation 21, he will wipe away every tear from their eyes and death shall be no more. Neither shall there be mourning, nor crying, nor pain anymore for the former things have passed away. How does that sound in your true home? I, I don't know what you're worried about and I don't know what you might be concerned about or even what you might be scared of or, or what might be getting in the way of your gratitude. But in our true home, in our real home, we won't be afraid of anything. Death itself will be no more. There won't even be mourning. There won't be crying or pain. Be thankful that in Christ you're a new creation and that God is working in your life. Hey, you might be stalled out. You might be having a hard time with gratitude, but think about this. You are a new creation in Christ Jesus. And even if you're stalled, God's still working on you. He still wants you to be moved by his spirit. Second Corinthians chapter five, verse 17 says, if any man is in Christ, he's a new creation. Old things are passed away and all things, and, and all things are become new. Philippians 1, 6, being confident of this, that he who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. God's still working on you. God's still working in you. Be thankful for that. God hasn't forgotten you. Don't forget him. As we pray, be thankful that you can come into God's presence. You know, as a Christian, maybe you are having a great time spiritually and you're reading your word and you're praying don't ever take prayer for granted that you come before the throne of god with jesus himself at his right hand interceding for you as you pray that's right not only is that involved but the holy spirit involves when you're when you're stuck and you don't know what to pray for or how to pray and and, and but you just all oh, i don't even know what to say god i'm just so ugh. yeah the Spirit interprets that ah to God in a way that God listens to. That's right. Psalm chapter 95, verses 2 and 3 says, Let us become, come before his presence with thanksgiving. Let us shout joyfully to him with psalms, for the Lord is a great God and a great king above all gods. That's why we got to come to him <laughs> with thanksgiving and, and joyfully because he allows us into his presence. Be thankful, not only that you get to be in his presence, but he hears your prayers. The psalmist says in Psalm chapter three and verse four, 
I call out to the Lord and he answers me from his holy mountain. Amen. Psalm chapter four, verse three, transposed. Know that the Lord has set apart his faithful servant for himself. The Lord hears when I call to him. First John chapter five, verses 14 and 15. This is the confidence we have in approaching God. That if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have what we asked of him. God doesn't just allow you there, but he listens to you. We thank God. We even are told to rejoice through difficulties. Well, not through difficulties, but because of, for the difficult things in our life. Yes. Amen. Because they strengthen us. They strengthen us. Romans chapter 8, verses 28 through 29, we know that in all things God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. For those God foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brothers and sisters in all things. You name it. Mm -hmm. Name what's hurting you, what's difficult, what's hard. Whatever that thing is, God is working for the good of those who love him. Keep loving God. Call out to God. Tell him your hurts. Tell him how you feel. But know that he loves you. And he'll bring you through stronger. That is the book of Job. Yep. God gave God knew that would be hard. That's why he gave us a whole book about it, along with many other scriptures. Like First Peter chapter 1, verses 6 and 7. In all this difficulty, you greatly rejoice. Though now for a little while, you've had to suffer grief and all kinds of trials. These have come so that the proven genuineness of your faith, of greater worth than gold, which perishes even through refined by, though refined by fire, may result in praise, glory, and honor when Christ Jesus is revealed. James chapter 1, verses 2 through 4. Man, we could live in these three passages of Scripture right now to help get our hearts around yeah. being grateful for quarantine, being grateful for uncertainty. James 1, 2 through 4, consider it pure joy. Be, be so grateful that, that you're joyful. Yeah. Whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing, you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Let perseverance finish its work. So that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. Mm -hmm. And don't be afraid. Be thankful that God is faithful. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 9 and 10. God is faithful who has called you into fellowship with his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. He'll never leave us. He'll never forsake us. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13. No temptation has seized you except what's common to man. Quarantine fatigue is common to man. But God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. But when you are tempted, he'll also provide a way out so that you can endure it. Psalm chapter 31 and verse 5, I entrust my spirit into your hand, just like Jesus. Rescue me, Lord, for you are a faithful God. And lastly, most importantly, it covers all the rest. Mm -hmm. Be thankful that God is in control. Yes. Be thankful that God is in control and you are not. Proverbs chapter 19 and verse 21. Many are the plans in the mind of a man, but it is the purpose of the Lord that will stand. Mark chapter 10, verse 27, Jesus looked at them and said, with man, this is impossible, 
but not with God. All things are possible with God. Proverbs chapter 16 and verse 9 says, In his heart a man plans his course, but the Lord determines his steps. Brothers and sisters, I, I know that being thankful is a difficult time this year. But I would propose that this year is the most important year in your life to pull out gratitude and to look at it and to give glory to God for whatever is good in your life. And there are good things. Find the good things. Those will like the way, not just for this week, but, but like the way in our hearts and help us to look forward to the coming days and the coming weeks and months. Mm -hmm. If you've been paying attention to this coronavirus vaccine stuff, they're saying it'll be widely available maybe by April. This is what I read about from Dr. Fauci today because of the different companies that are coming online. Just a short time, we have to, we have to be a little bit more disciplined and, and more careful and lean into it. The light is at the end of the tunnel, but the light is not that a vaccine for coronavirus is going to be widely available. The light is that God never changes. God is in control. You know, when I think about Jesus, I always think to myself, man, if I never had anything else in my life, if I never, uh, if I never had a different car or a different house or lived a different place or got a coronavirus vaccine, Jesus died for me. What more would we want? than God allowing his son, God in the flesh, to die for his enemies. God has not just given you that, but every good thing that's in Christ Jesus.